So I just discovered the easiest way to save your ggplot figures in R in just one line of code. So you've created this amazing figure in R, but what's next? You wanna bring that figure into your report or publication, right? But how do you do that? So you could click around RStudio and try to find a way to save it that way, but there's no way to be consistent. You see, like maybe a, a week or a few weeks or a month later, you might come back to it wanting to save that same figure again. Perhaps you wanna make a modification to it in the R code and you wanna save the figure, but you find that the figure saves at a slightly different size uh, or, or a different aspect ratio and something doesn't quite look right compared to the original figure. So that's why it's always important to have uh, to, to save your figures directly in the code of your script. So stick around to learn a game-changing way to save your figures in R. Before I start, I just wanted to let you know that my course on the basics of R for Ecology is now open for enrollment. Uh, also have my introduction to data visualization in R for Ecology that's also available for enrollment right now. I'm super, super excited and stoked about these courses. Uh, it's, it's literally what I wish I had as a grad student going into ecology. And I've really kind of tailored everything down to really only the essential tools, the essential functions that you need to know uh, to become really proficient in using R for your ecological data quickly and effectively without that crazy learning curve that everyone talks about with R. So if you're interested, check out the link below. I think there's gonna be a link in this video up here somewhere in this video and down below uh, if you are interested in enrolling. And without further ado, let's jump into this tutorial. All right, so for this tutorial, we're gonna be using ggplot2. Uh, if you don't have it installed already, you want to run install.packages ggplot2, but uh, I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna be running that. I'll just comment that out, and I will run library. So after you have it installed, run library ggplot2, run that, it ran successfully. Okay, so let's pull in the Loblolly Pine data set. So we'll use the data function to pull in this data. We'll call it's called Loblolly with a capital L Loblolly. And this is a type of pine tree. And let's take a look at this data set. So whenever you run the data function, you get this thing called promise. And then whenever you use that data, it, it'll appear as an actual um, data set here, or you can just click here and it'll just appear. Uh, let's take a look at it by running the help function and you can search Loblolly. Look, I had already done that. And here it is. The Loblolly data frame has 84 rows and three columns of records of growth of Loblolly pine trees. Uh, so one column is height, which so when running this, I can just run this on its own. These are the three columns of 84 rows. So one column is height, a uh, numeric vector of tree heights in feet. Then we have age, the numeric vector of tree ages in years, and seed, an ordered factor indicating the seed source for the tree. The ordering is according to increasing maximum height. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the ordering because we'll, we might not even use seed, but basically seed is the, yeah, the seed source for each of these seedlings. Now let's create a really simple ggplot figure. We'll actually let's rename this just so that pine data is a little more explanatory than just loblolly. Okay, and then let's do ggplot pine data. We'll add some aesthetics here by saying y equals height and x equals age. So we're just gonna plot height and age. We're not gonna worry about seed here. And we'll add a, we'll make this a scatter plot. So we'll use geome point. And all the information should be there. Let's see what happens when we run this. 
Okay, there we have it. Uh, we have age on the x-axis, height on the y-axis, and here we have, you see age was only measured at certain intervals, so kind of soon after the start, then every five years after that which is why we have all these points clustered all together like that. But let's just say this is the plot that we want to save. So here is the magic sauce, the one line of code that can save this plot for you. It's just gg save. And now let's name the plot. Let's say my pine plot and let's save it as a PDF. So all we have to do is do dot PDF. And the cool thing about ggsave is it knows and picks up on the fact that we said .pdf and knows to save it as a PDF. There is an argument where we can specify that specifically, but the cool thing about it is it just knows automatically. So look at that. This is not just one line of code, it's a very short line of code. And we run that, and we get this little message saving, 6.36 by 5.24 in image. Now let's take a look at that. I'm gonna pull it up here. From, so keep in mind that when you run this, it'll save in the current working directory. And if you use projects like I recommend everyone does, then it will be in the, so here I have this YouTube R tutorials project where I save all of this stuff. Uh, if we go to the root directory here of this project file, you'll see the .rproj, our project um, file, and that is the base directory. So we can see here, we save this as my pine plot. It will have saved in the base directory. And here it is, my pine plot. It's, we can actually open it right from here. It'll open in a separate window, which I will drag in front here. But that is it right there. Now, this isn't the best looking figure. And one big value in saving figures directly in your code is that you can specify the exact dimensions that you want. So let's try this again, but this time let's specify the dimensions. And all we have to do to do that is simply go width equals, let's make it four by four. Four height equals four. And we also have to set the new, the units. Now the default units are inches, so we'll, we can leave it at that and it should look the same, but so there's no future confusion uh, or, or mix up if, if the default changes or if you're not sure what the units are. Let's just declare them here so it's all explicit. Units equals in for inch. And let's save it one more time. This time, let, actually, let's rename it. Let's say four by four. Great, and now let's pull this new plot up. It should be in here. Look, my pine plot four by four. Nice, okay, so now it's got a nice uh, aspect ratio. We can actually compare it with the other one just to show you that the size is different. Yeah, look, it's kind of coming off the screen. I can make them both smaller. Yeah, so you can see the text size stayed the same, it's just the plot got bigger, so then the proportions kind of go off. So you can play around with, and I've got some blog posts and videos on how to play around with prototyping your plots until they look really nice. So I'm not gonna go into that here, but the point is that you can keep playing around with it. And that's it for a really simple and easy and quick way to be able to directly save your figures with just one line of code right in R. If you want to see the next part of this video where I take that figure to the next level, making it look much nicer by editing its ggplot theme uh, and adding a few additions, then be sure to subscribe so that you can see when this next video comes out. If you like this video, be sure to click the like button, comment down below if you have any questions or if you wanna share any cool figures that you've been working on. I'm always excited to read everything down below and the more excitement and the more enthusiasm I get from everyone, the more likely I'm going to be posting more and more videos. Uh, so yeah, thanks again for watching. Really, really appreciate it. And stay tuned for the next part of this video where I take this plot to the next level.